Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back. Today I'm going to share 5 different ways on how you can use big background stamps such as this one. This is called Pretty Peonies Background and it's uh, one of the stamps from the latest release by Simon Says Stamp. It has this beautiful design with flowers and leaves on top and I'm going to show you 5 techniques on how you can use it. For all the techniques throughout the video I'm going to use this stamp as an example. But look through your stash, you will find beautiful background stamps, I'm sure, that can work with any of those techniques that you are going to see today. For the first example, I'm going to stamp the whole thing with black ink and then I'm going to use my uh, mediums and color it in. This is um, the easiest way that you can go with a background stamp, although it is quite time consuming and it can be hard to the eyes. However, it is a really relaxing process to go in and color with your favorite medium all those little details. To color my image, I'm going to use my Arteza real brass markers. These are um, the 48 set and uh, it has a really good range of colors. In between those colors and the mixes that you can make with them, I don't think you're ever going to need more. Uh, they have a real nib on the front and they also come with a little brass uh, that you can uh, fit, fill it in with water to move the color. These are watercolor markers. Now these markers were sent to me by Arteza, but this video is not sponsored by any way from them. They just sent them to me to try them out and I really like them. Plus they gave me a coupon code for their website for me and my viewers and you will find it down below in the description area as well as on my blog. It's a 10% coupon code to get anything you like from their websites. Now you can move the color with uh, water and you can use either the water brush that comes in the set, any of the water brushes that you probably have, but they have also sent me a set of uh, seven different uh, water brushes that I want to try out today in this video. These are the ones that you fill in with water, you press on the barrel to start the flowing and then you're ready to go. And the, the set comes from very thin brass all the way to very flat and uh, wide ones. I had these pens for about uh, a couple of weeks and I have been playing with them a lot and I really like them. I also like their water brushes. I think uh, the flow is uh, quite controllable and they don't just uh, pour water all over your project. Remember that I don't do sponsored videos but I do get a lot of uh, products from many companies to try them out and use them on my videos. However, not everything makes it into my videos. I only use what I absolutely love and uh, I know it works and I can recommend it to you guys. Now I'm working on a watercolor paper and as you can see it is really easy for me to blend those colors together. I find that it is uh, more relaxing and easier to do than using alcohol markers. And uh, at this uh, point I'm not using any water at all, I'm just doing all the blending directly on my paper with those two markers that I'm using. I'm going to repeat the same process and color all the flowers. So for the first technique, just go for it, use your favorite coloring medium and color the whole image. Now I'm going to color the leaves. Again, I'm using the same technique as with the petals. I'm adding uh, at the base of the leaf, the darker shade, and then with a lighter color, I start from the tip of the leaf and then go all my way down to meet the darker color where I can blend them together. Of course, you can use uh, another color to color in all the white space in between those flowers and leaves. I decided to leave it white as it is. And to make it a card, I just placed this panel on top of a green card base, stamped and embossed my sentiment on top of a very thin strip of cardstock. And I also added a few of those uh, droplets all over the place. And check out how vibrant my colors look, just because I didn't use water to thin them down. The second way is to heat emboss the whole thing. So here I'm using Versamark ink, I'm going to stamp it on a piece of white cardstock. And I'm using my Misty here, and just because I cannot use a little magnet, since it's going to cover up completely the whole uh, space, I have some uh, double-sided tape underneath, that's removable tape, so I know that uh, the paper is going to stay in place. 
Now I'm going to stamp everything twice just to make sure that I have a good impression and I'm going to apply gold embossing powder. This design creates uh, really elegant cards, perfect for weddings and anniversaries and uh, it would look also great with silver embossing powder as long as you end up with a beautiful lace looking background that uh, has a lot of shine. To turn this into a card I'm using a panel that is gold. I have foam tape at the back of my stamped image. I'm going to stick that on top and as you can see I have chopped off a little bit from the bottom just to make my card more interesting. And I also die cut out of the same cardstock, the gold cardstock, the word congrats. I'm going to stick that at the bottom of my panel and I have a lovely card perfect for weddings or anniversaries. Now for the third design idea, I call it pop-up a part of the design, which means that you are going to stamp the whole thing on a panel using a very pale ink pad. Uh, here I'm using one by Simon Says Stamp. The ink I'm using is Burly Beige, but as always you will find everything I'm using linked down below. So I'm going to stamp it one more time just to get a good impression everywhere. And I have a very, very pale impression, not very up into your face or uh, vibrant. And now I'm going to stamp again just a part of this design. I only want a flower. So for that I'm going to use a white scrap of paper. This is a watercolor cardstock by the way, and I'm using black ink to stamp that making sure that the ink is permanent so it's not going to smudge when I will use water with my brushes. Now the idea is to color just a part of the image, cut it out and pop it on top of uh, your already stamped panel. This is going to add some dimension and it's going to bring the image into life. So again here I'm coloring my flower with my Arteza brush pens since I am trying them out for you today. Now in this case I'm using another technique to color in the petals, so I'm just using one color here and I am diluting it with water. And you can see that I end up with a paler look and um, it's not as vibrant as the first card that I made using the oranges and the yellows. I work on every petal separately, I add a color at the base of each petal and then with the water brush I just blend it out making sure that I don't cover up completely the whole petal. I like to have some uh, white areas here and there. Now I'm going with a darker marker and you can see that you can use that as a palette. I just applied a little bit of color on my glass mat there and now I'm picking up a darker shade and adding it only at the base of the petals where the darker shades are. I also colored a few leaves that are attached to this flower and now I'm going to use my scissors and cut it out exactly where the black lines are. I'm going to run a black marker around the edges of my cutout piece. This is going to disguise any mistakes that I did as I was cutting out and it's also going to get rid of that white uh, edge. It's a little detail that uh, really makes a big difference to your cutouts. Now all I have to do is to add some foam tape at the back and I'm going to place it directly on top of the same flower. But now it is nicely popped up and colored. For my card base I went with a cardstock that matches the darker shade of uh, my flower. I also cut out the word love and I stamped and embossed on a very thin black strip of cardstock the word sending. I'm going to combine everything together very close to the flower so I'm creating a little cluster there with my image and the sentiment. And I finished off my card by adding some uh, gems here and there. For the fourth card I'm going to use the emboss resist technique so I'm stamping again the whole thing with Versamark ink and then I'm doing that on white cardstock and I'm going to apply white embossing powder. So here is uh, the paper, it's all embossed and obviously you can't see anything until I start blending out some color. For that I'm using Distress Oxide inks in two of my favorite colors which are Warm Lipstick and uh, Spiced Marmalade. I apply layers again and again until I have everything nicely saturated and uh, you can see how easy it is to blend those colors together and then I will go over it with a clean cloth to clean everything that stays on top of the embossed areas. 
Now to turn this panel into a card, as you can see, I cut it out to be slightly shorter than my standard card, so I can see a little white underneath. And I used foam tape to stick the panel down. Now I'm going to stick my sentiment. That's just a cutout that says hugs. It comes from an Alte New die set that I keep using again and again, one of my favorite uh, sentiment die cuts. And um, here are some close-up photos on this card. And for my fifth technique for today, I'm going to use my alcohol lifting. So here I'm working on Yupo. I have applied with my pipette a little bit of blending solution. And then on top, I'm going with my alcohol inks. The colors I'm using, I believe, are pool, mermaid and denim. And I'm going to blow with a straw, making sure that uh, all that ink is going to cover up completely the whole panel. Once my Yupo paper was completely dry, I placed it inside my Misty. Remember, I have some uh, double-sided tape underneath, uh, which is removable, so it's going to stay in place. And I'm going to ink up my whole stamp with uh, Lift Ink. This is uh, a product by Ranger that is going to lift the ink from the Yupo, and it's going to give a beautiful ghost uh, result. Once uh, you open up the door of the Misty, you will see nothing ha has happened, but you need to leave that ink to react a little bit. And then once you leave it for a few seconds, you can buff it off like I'm doing here. And then the beautiful design is going to be revealed. Also remember that now your, your stamp has ink on top, which you can of course stamp on top of some paper and you will have another background. And now to turn this panel into a card, I cut out the word thanks and I'm going to stick that on a white card base. I also completed my sentiment by stamping uh, one more sentiment and I placed it just underneath. And let's take a quick look on all the five cards that I created using the same background stamp, using stamping, inking, coloring, embossing, and even lift inking, all different ways that create beautiful cards just with one stamp. So thank you all for watching today. I hope I have inspired you to give background stamps a go. I think they are great for creating cards, plus they give you the opportunity to play around with so many different techniques. Don't forget you will find a coupon code down below as well as links to everything I used. I hope you will have a lovely weekend and I'll see you all next week.